BRF, University Health, the governor and LSU have filed breach of contract notices against BRF, apparently happened late last night, giving BRF 45 days to resolve the issues or the contract will be terminated. Did you did you know this was coming? How are you reacting this morning? Well, uh, obviously not very pleased about it, but you, you have to remember this is something that LSU and the state attempted uh, about two years ago. Uh, and I think that this governor uh, is still struggling, struggling and trying to come to grips with the reality uh, that the, new, the hospital in New Orleans receives a dollar in, in state funding for every 31 cents that the one here in Shreveport gets. And that the fact that you got a substantial group of folks here in Shreveport uh, and in Monroe uh, who are not willing to continue to accept that as reality. I, I think that this is a deal uh, that was uh, essentially in many ways set up to fail from the very beginning uh, by that very funding disparity. Uh, you've got those of us here in Shreveport and Monroe uh, who have come to that full understanding right now uh, are uh, challenging those folks who uh, put us in this place in the first, pa- in, in the first place uh, and are determined uh, to do something about it. So at this point, uh, I think this situation is going to go to court as it did uh, two years ago, uh, and we'll have a chance to be able to make some of those arguments there. But uh, I think the struggle uh, to continue to uh, grow and build and diversify uh, the health care market in Shreveport uh, will continue. One thing that also needs to be noticed uh, is that two years ago, well, over two years ago, April of 2015, uh, the folks from BRF uh, brought uh, the folks from Oshniff to the table uh, for the first time. Uh, you had considerable a pushback from members of this local legislative delegation. Uh, one of those folks happens to right now be the right-hand man uh, of Governor John Bell Edwards. And so uh, I think that there is uh, uh, some internal uh, strife that's uh, helping to facilitate uh, some of this uh, within the governor's own administration. Uh, folks who have uh, limited interest in seeing uh, what the Shreveport health care market desperately needs actually come to fruition, and that's competition. You have one provider that has over 77 percent market share right now, an essential monopoly. That's one of the issues that's at the core of this. And when Oshness came to the table or was attempted to be brought to the table two years ago, uh, you had conniptions going from one side of Shreveport to the other based upon the fact that you have somebody who'd be able to come in and offer health care consumers in Shreveport, northwest Louisiana, north Louisiana for that matter, uh, exactly what they need, and that is, more, better, and greater options when it comes to going out and pursuing their health care needs. If, if, in your opinion, if, in your opinion, BRF is underfunded by the state, 30-something cents on the dollar, as you have repeatedly stated, if BRF is underfunded by the state, how is another provider, Oshner or WK or anybody, how, how will merely changing providers change the financial situation, i.e. Well, the, or the financial straits that we find that ourselves one, in? That is one of the questions that we've continually asked the governor and, and his folks who are in the midst of trying to push BRF out. And, and that is what happened is the folks who were on, on duty in 2013 allowed a funding formula go forward. Uh, that greatly enrich uh, folks outside of North Louisiana. It's not just New Orleans. It's some of the other hospitals in southern Louisiana as well uh, who were first to the table, uh, who got the biggest and best cuts off the hog, uh, and they've left us with the feet, the tail, and the guts uh, and expect us to make do up here. Uh, And and that's not something uh, that I or other members of this delegation or other folks from Monroe are willing to continue to accept, uh, and that's going to have to be something that changes because you are absolutely correct. Unless you manage to be able to balance out uh, the funding needs uh, of this situation, it doesn't matter uh, if you bring somebody else to the table because they're not going to come here uh, and spend money uh, that doesn't have the potential uh, to come back to them in some form of a return. But bluntly put, if if it were, say, theoretically WK, because of their position in this market, couldn't they take that financial hit without, uh, without too much pain, without uh, well, any pain at all, come to think of it? Well, I, I think the pain would end up being put upon the people, and that is you'd end up with more of a monopoly than what you already have, which is not allowed. You'd also end up with the paying customers that are currently uh, a substantial part of the, the patient mix at University Health being diverted to WK uh, because that's where the dollars end up going. And you'd end up with more of the indigent, uh, unable to pay folks uh, being relegated to uh, university health. And that would give us a hospital model here, uh, more like what you see in New Orleans and other parts of South Louisiana, as opposed to what has been for years held up as the Shreveport model, where you had some of the very 
uh, wealthiest folks uh, within this community who sought out the high quality health care uh, that's available at University Health. The Virginia Sheehy's, the Aaron Selbers, and other folks over the world who took their money, their dollars, their pocketbooks, uh, their insurance policies, and went to University Health uh, to have their services provided. If you end up with the provider that has the kind of intentions that WK does, then what you'll end up doing is simply transferring all the paying customers to WK and leave all the indigent ones behind at University Health. I don't see how that serves anyone's interest in, in this area with the exception uh, of the folks at Willis Knight.